Percussive Pythonistas, it's Prof G, and in this Circuit Python School lesson, you've got the beat. We're going to harness the power of lists to set up capacitive touch pads, detect touches on those pads, play sounds and flash colors, and we'll build a drum machine. Wait, with fruit? Oh yeah, it's possible with Circuit Python. <laughs> You'll also learn how you can hook up any speaker with an RCA jack to your CPB for even better sound, so let's learn big. Now in the last example, we used a separate line of Python code to create a capacitive touchpad. Remember like this, touchpad underscore a1 equals touch io dot touch in, and then we passed in board dot one, and then we did the same thing for the other two pads, a2 and a3, but I'm gonna show you that there's a more efficient way to set this up using lists, and then there's gonna be an even bigger payoff when we want to detect a touch in our while true loop. So first, instead of creating a separate touchpad underscore variable for each touchpad, we're gonna first create a list named pad, and that list will be filled with the location of all of the touchpads, board.a1 through board.tx. So we've seen that we can create lists from strings, numbers, and even colors. Well, we can also create lists using these board.locations a1 through tx. Now this way, if we want to go through all of the board.pad locations, we simply need to loop through this list named pad. So this line up here, pad equals, gives us this down here, pad and in brackets zero equals board.a1, pad one equals board.2, pad two equals board.3, pad three equals board.4, pad four equals board.5, pad five equals board.6, and pad six equals board.tx. Now each element of pad is just the location of the physical pad on the board. But remember, we need to create an object using this touch in class, and we need to pass the location of a valid touch pad in order to be able to create this touch in object. So here's our trick. Instead of creating this line by line like we did up here, we're first going to create an empty list that will eventually hold all of the touch in objects, but it's going to start out empty. So we'll call this touch pad, and it starts out empty because we set this equal to empty square brackets. There's nothing inside. That means the list is empty. It's got nothing. Its length is zero. But we'll loop through the pad list, board.a1 through board.tx, and one by one we'll take pad in brackets i, so that's zero all the way through six and that'll take us from board.a1 through board.tx we'll feed that pad element into the touch in class that'll create our touch in object and then once that's created we'll just append it to the array so each time we go through this loop we're increasing the size of the array because we're appending a new touch in object so when we're done, instead of creating a separate touchpad underscore a1, touchpad underscore a2 for all seven pads, we instead have just one list named touchpad, and each element in that list is a working touchpad. There are seven elements associated with those touchpads a1 through tx. Now if we did it the old way, this would have taken us seven lines of code to set up. Here it only takes four lines of code, but it's when we want to detect if a touchpad was touched that we'll see some real efficiency. Let me show you how we're going to do that. Now in our previous lesson, inside of the while true loop, we had a separate variable for each touchpad object, so we needed a separate if statement to check to see if the dot value property were true. And if it was true, then we changed the color, we played a sound, and then we turned off the lights. Well, if we did things the old way, then we would need a separate if block with all of these additional statements for each touchpad. But now look at the advantage of lists. We only need to use this for loop We'll go through a range that's the length of touch pads, so that's seven values, zero through six, and each time we go through, we'll check if a given touch pad, starting at zero and ending at six, has been touched. So we'll check to see if its dot value property is true, and if it is, we'll just fill it in with a color. Now one extra bonus, remember this list colors that we created a few lessons back? Well, we still have that in our code. Well, we can refer to colors in brackets i to light up the lights in a different color for each different pad. We're not playing sounds, but we'll do that later in the lesson so let's try this out it'll work fairly well but when we run this we'll see that there's going to be one more thing that we want to change let's head over to moo and code up what we got so far now remember if you haven't saved your work from lesson 11 you might want to save that now i've already saved that but i'm going to change my comment to read lesson 12 you've got the beat then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to delete the three touchpads underscore a1 underscore a2 and underscore a3 I don't need those anymore and I'm going to set up these touchpads first by creating a list pad equals and in brackets board.a1 board.a2 board.a3 board.a4 board.a5 board.a6 and board.tx 
Then I'm going to create an empty list named touchpad. And oh, I see as I'm doing the voiceover that code completion had uh, completed touchpad underscore A1 in the comment here. It's not going to affect our code, but the comment should read touchpad, not touchpad underscore A1. And we'll type below here, touchpad equals open and close brackets. There's nothing inside those brackets, so that means that this list is going to be empty. Then we're going to loop through all elements of pad and we're going to create a touch in object appending it to the touch pad list. And we do that with a for loop for i in range in parentheses len in parentheses again pad. So that's what we're looping through. There are seven elements in pad. We'll go through zero through six, close paren, close paren, colon. And then we're going to create a new value of touchpad and append it to the initially empty touchpad array. So we do that with touchpad dot append. And then in parentheses, touch IO dot touch in, in parentheses, pad, and in brackets, I, close the brackets, close parens, and close parens again. And by the time we've gone through this loop, we now have an array of touch pads, which has seven elements in it, zero through six, and those are touch pads created from board one through board TX. Next, in our while true loop, we're going to use this colors array. Remember this great array that we created in a previous lesson? It's got all these colors set up in it. Well, we're just going to use the first seven colors here. Those are going to be the colors red through blue. And then down in while true, I'm going to get rid of all the old code that I got in here, and we're going to use our for loop. So we'll say for i in range len, and that's going to be touchpad. Then make sure that you close that with the two parens and a colon. And we're going to check to see if touchpad in brackets i. So we're going to look at every single element of the touchpad array, and we're going to look at its dot value property colon. And if this is true, then indented on the next line, we're just going to say pixels dot fill. In parens, we're going to pass in colors, bracket i. That'll give us a different color for each pad that we touch. Let's show the serial console, and we'll click on save and try this out. So we'll press A1, that's red, A2, magenta, A3, orange, A4, yellow, A5, green, A6, jade, and TX is blue. Looking good. Now, one thing that would be nice is if we turn all of the lights off, if we're not touching one of the pads, can we do that? Yes, we can. And here's how we'll set that up. Now we want to only turn off the lights if we don't detect any touch on any of the seven pads. So we're first going to create a value named touch. This is going to be a Boolean value. It's going to be either true or false. And we'll initially set it to false, meaning as far as we know, no pads have been touched. But then when we loop through our touch pads, if touch pads in bracket i dot value is true, well, in that situation, we have detected a touch on one of the pads. So we're going to set this touched value to true. So touched will only be true if at least one of the pads has in fact been touched when we check it. Then down here, after we've gone through the entire list of touch pads in this for loop, if none of the pads have been touched, then touched will be false, just as we set it up initially. And if that's the case, we're going to turn the lights off. Now, this statement that you see here, touched equals equals false, isn't a typo. The way we check to see if something is equal in Python and many other programming languages too, is we use the double equal sign with no space in between. So we've already seen one equal sign means assignment. Take what's on the right hand side and assign it to the variable on the left hand side of the equal sign but two equal signs in a row means evaluate to see if the left side of the double equals is the same as the right side of the double equals. And if they are the same, if they're equal, then the value is true. Otherwise, the value is false. And so if it's true that touched equals false, we're going to turn the lights off. But if one of the touch pads was touched, touched is going to be true. Then when we hit this if statement, it is not true that touched equals equals false is true. So we'll skip the step where we turn out the lights and we'll loop back to the beginning of our while true loop. Now notice what we do at the beginning of the while true loop as well. We reset touch to false so that we can once again go through our for loop and check to see if any of our touch pads were touched. So this should work great. Let's code it up and give it a try. So back in Moo, right after while true, I'm going to say touched equals false. That's the default state. We start out assuming nothing's been touched, but then we check to see if anything was touched. And we know if something's been touched if we get down here to pixels.fill. So right after pixels.fill, I'm going to say touched equals true. Now it's only going to be touched equals true if touchpad in brackets i dot value is true. So I'm only setting touch to true if I've detected a touch. Then I'll press return and I'll backspace out so that I'm typing even with the for loop. I don't want this next statement to be inside the for loop. And I'm going to say if touched equals equals false 
colon. So this statement is only true if touched is false and that's equal equal to false. So if it's false on both sides, then it's true. And if it's true that both sides are false, then we're just gonna say pixels.fill and pass in black. That shuts off the lights. Either way, we're gonna loop up to the top of while true. We're gonna turn touch to false again and we'll continue to check those pads to see if any were touched. So let's open up the serial console, click on save and let's see if this works. So I'm touching these pads and when I touch them, the lights go on. We get a different color for every pad, but when my finger is off, the lights all go off. Excellent work. And now it's time for our challenge. We're going to build a drum machine. I promised you we'd do that at the end of the last video. And the way that we're gonna set this up, I'm assuming that you've got the files from the previous videos for all of the different waves. You should have seven of them in a drum samples folder on your CPB. I want you to create a list of the various strings that are the names of those files that are inside of drum samples, and then use that list to play a sound. So when a given pad is pressed, I want you to play the sound file that's associated with that pad. So when you press A1, that's the first pad in position zero. We should play bass hit C dot wave. And when you press pad TX, we should play the scratch sound. This is gonna be remarkably easy to set up. Now for a bonus, if you've got alligator clips and all of my students do have alligator clips, you can attach them to the pads and connect the other end to anything that will conduct electricity. So I've attached one to a Euro so I can have some Euro beats. See what I did there? And the others are attached to, yikes, fruit. Yup, fruit conducts electricity too. It's organic, so I've got a fruit drum set. And let's listen to this. <laughs> oh, how about that? And one more bonus for you, if you have an external speaker with one of these standard RCA jacks, you can easily hook up a CPB to play through that speaker using two alligator clips. Then you can play your sound through that speaker. It should sound much better than the little speaker that's built into the CPB. Just clip one alligator clip to any of the GND or ground pads on the CPB and clip the other end to the sleeve of the RCA jack then clip the other alligator clip to the pad that's labeled audio, that's right next to V out and A1, and clip the other end of that wire to the tip of the RCA jack, and you should find that if your code plays sound, it goes through the speaker. This will work with a simple iPhone speaker like I'm using in my setup, but it also works with headphones or even large speakers like guitar amps. So if you've got the alligator clips and an external speaker, you can try those techniques out, but back to the challenge, why don't you give this a shot? Pause, and then when you're ready, resume, and let's compare answers. So back in Moo, I'm gonna close the serial console and I'm gonna scroll up and right underneath where I set the path for my drum sounds, I am going to set up a list for my drum sounds. So I'm gonna create a new variable called drum underscore sounds. I'll set that equal to, and it's gonna be a list. So we have open bracket, and then I'll type in the strings bass underscore hit underscore C dot wave. That's in double quotes, comma, and you wanna make sure that you spell this exactly correct. Otherwise you'll get an error. Then bd underscore tech dot wave, bd underscore zone dot wave, drum underscore cowbell dot wave, elec underscore symbol dot wave, elec underscore high underscore snare dot wave, and scratch dot wave. Now, while Python is fussy about indentations, one thing that you can do when you're creating a list is you can put the elements on separate lines. I find that's really useful if I want to make sure that I've got all seven of my sounds in here. So that's what I've done. It makes it easier to look at. And yep, I've got all seven sounds. So all we needed was one line to set up our drum sounds list. And then we need one other line to play those sounds. So right under here, under pixels.fill, I'm gonna add a new line, play underscore sound. Remember, that's the function we created a couple of lessons ago. And I'm gonna pass into the parentheses, drum underscore sounds in brackets, I. Now let's open up the serial monitor, click on save and see if this works. Since you already heard the cool Eurobeats version with fruit and the better speaker, this is what it would sound like if you didn't have any speaker or alligator clips hooked up. Well, 
would you look at that? You solved the challenge with just two lines of code. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Kanye West is known as Yeezy. My friends, you have conquered sounds, you have conquered capacitive touch, you have bent the list data structure to your will, and you've been banging out impressive tunes with flashing lights. Go have a beverage to celebrate your hard work. You are becoming a maker. Nice work. Keep at it.